Of course, leave it to humanity's very own barely humanoid tech CEO, Mark Zuckerberg, to watch the Matrix and cheer for the machines. Starting with the most important experience of all, connecting with people. But seriously, the metaverse is not actually a new idea. There have been many attempts in movies and video games to explore a world in which humans live their lives in a virtual environment. In fact, it's a pretty popular philosophical subject to debate. For at least two decades, serious people have been writing serious papers trying to logically deduce an answer, or probability, to the question of whether we are already living in a simulation. The argument in favor of that idea is pretty simple. Eventually, any intelligent life form, given enough time, will build sufficient computing capacity to replicate consciousness in a general artificial intelligence. Therefore, either someone came before us and already built it, or we will go extinct. The probability that we are, in fact, the first intelligent species to make it this far is considered unlikely. Personally, I've never found this argument very convincing. It feels a bit lazy, but that's besides the point. There does seem to be a difference between building a metaverse for a general AI you wrote versus building a metaverse for yourself. Unless Zuckerberg thinks he found a way to hack our simulation, we still have to deal with things like food and bathrooms and shelter and hygiene. But I'm sure this vision of everyone being plugged in all day is an exaggeration and not really the goal. Yet, virtual reality is pretty neat for entertainment purposes. Going on remote vacations or playing immersive video games have already arrived. Hmm, I wonder if the Great Pyramids are really all that great. I wonder if we can take Grandma to her childhood home. I wonder how many penguins live in Antarctica. I wonder what that bookstore on Polk Street used to be. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I wonder where to go next. Wow! Is it really a big stretch to combine those two things together? And rather than just watch a video of a real place in VR, actually control an avatar moving around a perfect virtual replica of that real place? If you start with a small objective, like an office room, and a cartoon character, it doesn't feel like a big deal. If you extrapolate out a few years and give an avatar lifelike skin, and expand that office room into a touristy neighborhood of a major city, it feels plausible. The question, though, is how much time will you actually spend in that virtual world? The devices are big and heavy, but eventually they will get small and light. That's not really a long-term problem. The problem is that we have five senses. At best, until we actually build a real matrix-style plug for our brains, current technology can only accommodate two, sight and hearing. The metaverse does nothing for smell, taste, or touch, so it will never be good enough to replace a real trip to Italy. As a side note, I can't imagine how confusing this whole debate must be to someone who's visually impaired. In any case, I wonder if it might just be the best commercial possible for a trip to Italy to experience something spectacular for real. There is a reason restaurants take close-up pictures of their food, and automakers show their cars driving on mountainous roads. They are trying to tease you without fully satisfying you, kind of like the metaverse. At this point, you might be thinking, Okay, but what does any of this have to do with blockchain? Really, nothing, necessarily. What we are seeing is two technologies trying to merge their hype cycles to maximize their pump. Remember, blockchains are just inefficient databases that aren't owned by a single entity. For an end user, whether you're in an immersive virtual world or not, ideally, if a service you are using is implemented using a blockchain, you wouldn't even know. Nobody cares what kind of database Gmail is using. The only reason people know about the differences between various blockchains and not the differences between MySQL and Postgres databases is because blockchains have tokens that people like to gamble with, so they start to learn facts about their favorite pet database to shill their favorite tokens. The metaverse doesn't need a blockchain for anything. There is literally nothing you can build with a blockchain that you can't also build without one. Literally nothing. It's just a database. The most common justification for combining these two concepts is to make virtual goods interoperable between virtual worlds. Any one single virtual world can have its own store of virtual assets without a blockchain. But if you want to take those assets with you elsewhere, that could be done with a public blockchain accessible to all virtual worlds. A few things to point out. First, why would a company want that? I'm sure giving you the ability to export your social network from Facebook is a very low priority on their development list. But even if companies wanted to let you import and export assets from their virtual world, they can do that far easier without a blockchain than with one. 
It's what we call a standard. Different companies just need to agree on the interface and properties of the object they are making portable, which they would have to do anyway with a blockchain. But what about hackers? What if I didn't really earn some special weapon or whatever in Virtual World 1, and I tried to trick Virtual World 2 into believing that I did? The blockchain can be a permanent and public immutable record of what I own that Virtual World 2 can reference to verify my claims. That's true, it could. But since these companies are already working together, Virtual World 2 could always just ask Virtual World 1. Again, it's just an interface. The modern internet is already built like this. When you access a website or use a mobile app, it's already combining services from many different vendors into a single experience for you. People might ask the question, well, how can Virtual World 2 trust Virtual World 1? You could ask the exact same question about blockchain. No blockchain can guarantee the data that Virtual World 1 writes is correct. It just guarantees that it doesn't change. They could very easily, deliberately or even accidentally, corrupt the blockchain with garbage data, and Virtual World 2 would have no way of knowing. Just imagine if the blockchain they use actually was permissionless and censorship resistant. If you think spam on YouTube is bad, wait until you see a blockchain-powered metaverse. There is also the fact that every time you save data to the blockchain, it costs you money. Imagine if every time you wrote a YouTube comment, you had to pay a few cents. That might cut down on spam, but it also might kill the feature altogether. Hackers probably won't care spending a few cents for laughs, but legitimate users might think twice before doing anything and more often than not, do nothing at all. So can you build a metaverse that uses blockchain to govern ownership of assets? Yes. Will someone try? Yes. Is it more annoying? Also yes. Is it required? Absolutely not. Will it succeed? I'm sure we will see both and users will decide who wins. I try not to make predictions about things like this, but if it plays out the way other similar technologies have, there will always be a hardcore idealist camp that wants to keep their stuff free from centralized control and use the non-corporate database option for everything. But the experience will be a bit slow and clunky and annoying, so most people will probably prefer the fun, fast corporate version that adds new stuff to keep you engaged at a pace the free guys can't match. They may pay lip service to blockchain to mute your outrage over corporate ownership of personal data. But really, 99% of your data will be stored elsewhere because they actually need to run a business and will use the most efficient tech to ensure they win. Do you really want all your personal data to be permanently and publicly accessible anyway?